Okay. Yeah. So before I recap, you know, a uh, few sessions uh, that we had last time, and uh, you know, let us move and uh, just see what we uh, uh, learned last few weeks. Hello, Shashiana. Praise a lot, Shashi brother. Good evening to you. I know you will be busy, okay, but I know you may be hearing us. God bless you. Okay. So uh, we will recap a few sessions, what we heard, and then we will um, move. Pleasure. Pleasure. Fine, fine, brother. Fine, fine. Fine, fine. Wow, no. Wow, no. Wow, no. Ah, yeah. Okay, right. Any exam prayer just to know. Huh? Don't worry. Yeah. Okay. okay then. Can, Can somebody uh, pray so that we will move forward? Yeah. Yeah. Lucy, you are there. Can you do a small prayer if you don't mind? Sure, Pastor. Father, thank you for this beautiful day, for this beautiful life, Father. Father, you said where two or more are gathered in your presence. You are there. Thank you, Father, for your presence in our midst, Father. We thank you, Father. We submit pastor and all the people and all the families who are gathered here, Lord. And also those who could not make it, Father, that they will be able to join us. And we bless this study, Lord. Thank you, Father, that it will be led by your Holy Spirit, Lord, because your word is potent and your word is powerful, Lord. And thank you, Father, that our eyes of understanding be open to receive your word, Lord, and apply it into our lives. Father, thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you so much. That was a very nice. Praise the Lord. Okay, so we will just recap a little bit before we enter. So we discussed, I think, a lot of things. Uh, but last few sessions, I remember... You know, we talked about, uh, yeah, primarily when we do the book of uh, Revelation, we should understand that it's a sealed book. So you know that uh, what, what it means by being a sealed book, that means uh, God has sealed it. And uh, why God has sealed it is, is that because uh, Satan should not know it, number one, okay? Uh, because if Satan knows it, you know, he will... Uh, throughout the plans of God. So even Satan cannot, uh, he will uh, destroy the plans of God. He will divert and uh, uh, he will do havoc with the plans of God, which he's already doing. Okay. So uh, that is why it's a sealed book. And another thing is, uh, it, it's an opportunity for the wise to discover. Okay. So not it's not so easy that everyone will discover and enter into the kingdom of God because only the few, you know, who are wise and few who are the seekers, okay. They are the seekers so who honestly uh, seek the truth. Only they will enter into the kingdom of God. So that's how, uh, that is how, why God has sealed the book of Revelation. So uh, that is one thing. And why we study the book of Revelations? Because, you know, uh, it is a part of the new covenant. That means it's, it's, uh, it is what the church should look forward to in the days to come. Okay. So it's very important for the church, you know, because the church should look forward to for the days to come. Uh, uh, and the church should be prepared, you know, for the days to come. So we have nothing now. Okay. Uh, all that has been written in the Bible has already been experienced. Okay. Has already been lived through. Jesus came 2000 years back and, you know, uh, the, he fulfilled all the scriptures, everything has been fulfilled. And then he taught how the church must live. So the church has been existing since past 2000 years. So there's nothing particularly new. But what remains unfulfilled is the book of Revelations. It still remains unfulfilled. And it is the forthcoming season or the forthcoming future and the time that is going to unfold before us. So it's very vital for us to understand. Okay. So what is going to happen in the future? Okay, so now we studied a lot of things, uh, uh, what he called. Uh, 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 so we went through a lot of things. Okay, so in certain, you, just to recap a little bit, you know, we saw how, you know, in Revelation chapter 5, there was this scroll in the hand, you know, of a man that is a father God and, uh, you know, the elders that... 
24 elders were weeping, saying that who is able to open the seal of the scroll? Okay. And uh, then one of the elders came and he said to the weeping John, saying that don't worry, that the lamp has uh, triumphed to open the scroll. Okay. So we saw how it's everything in Revelation is sealed and sealed in the sense everything is symbolic. So everything has to be understood in symbols and in sign languages, you know, uh, and in symbolic language. Okay. So it is, uh, there are very few parts of the book of Revelation which are literal, but most of it is actually 90% of the book is totally symbolic. So the symbols mean something. They stand for something. For example, the beast, it's a symbol. Okay. It talks about, you know, a kingdom, with, you know, a, a false kingdom of, you know, a false ruler, thrones. You know, it talks about principalities, crowns. It talks about horn. It talks about authority, you know, uh, so on and so forth. So there are many symbols like this, which need to be understood, you know, not in the literal sense. So if, if there's, a, uh, there's, there's given something like the sun, you should not literally understood like the literally understand like the sun, okay, or the moon or the eleven stars. So we we should understand it as the tribes, okay, and uh, uh, as moon as the Israel, sun as the father. So there are a lot of things that we need to understand it. So once we know the whole Bible, we can easily put those things in perspective. Oh, yeah, because you know, Jacob uh, Joseph when he saw the dream, he saw. The sun, moon, and the stars boiling down to him. It, it meant his father interpreted it correctly. He said the sun means the uh, that he and his he he and his wife Rachel and Leah, and uh, uh, moon moon means you know his wife and uh, the eleven stars mean uh, his uh, has eleven sons who bowed down before who bowed down before Joseph. So it was so very clear, my dear friends. So absolutely clear about you know what it could have been okay so it's everything is symbolic you know so everything is figurative everything uh has a sign and a symbol which points out you know something so in that sense the whole book is sealed so that the devil will not know and the clever and the cunning people will not know uh and they will exploit you know uh, the days of the second coming so only the wise people and the seekers will know and they will enter into the kingdom of God. So, so beautiful it is. You know, the book of Revelation gives us absolutely great insights. Yeah. So uh, we talked about, you know, the church of God and the church of the world. Okay. So we are, we talked about, I think in one of the teachings, I taught you about uh, how, the, what's the true church and what's the, uh, which has the spirit of truth and the, worldly churches which are the spirit of falsehood we talked about the figurative trumpet okay so what is the meaning of the trumpet you know those who blow the trumpets okay the figurative trumpet is actually a person trumpet means the sound of proclaiming so uh, the person uh, the trumpet it it doesn't make a sound of its own it needs a person so the person who blows the trumpet so you know in the book of revelations we see angels blowing the trumpets but actually it stands for uh, godly people proclaiming you know or declaring the kingdom so we already uh, learned so many things about uh, what are the trumpets and all that and we heard how isaiah 58 1 isaiah 18 3 you know uh, john uh, se several scriptures associated with how the trumpet uh, uh, is in a figurative sun a sense talking about a person who will declare the gospel. Then we heard about the figurative Jerusalem and Babylon. Okay, I think it was the last week's teaching huh? or last before last week's teaching. I don't really know, but we know that there is a state called Judea and there is a city called Jerusalem. And then we know that there's a nation called Babylon. Okay, and uh, we know that uh, um, that Babylon is the city uh, or the country which came and attacked, uh, which came and attacked uh, Jerusalem or Israel or Judea and plundered Judea and Jerusalem and destroyed it. And uh, we see a pattern of this. And then God recreated uh, Jerusalem, recreated Judea through uh, Ezra and Nehemiah 
and uh, the prophets, uh, Isaiah, Haggai, Habakkuk, all these people got recreated. So this we saw, I think, uh, last two weeks study, we saw how how the same pattern is going to get recreated. Okay, and uh, we saw how God's judgment uh, comes on Babylon. We saw how how uh, what you call uh, ba Babylon is destroyed by God's ju judgment, and then God recreates Jerusalem. So it's the same thing we see uh, what you called in the book of Revelations, repeating where. Once again, you know, the devil will come and destroy the holy city. Okay, he will make an attempt to destroy, and but then God will recreate the spiritual Jerusalem. So that is why Apostle Paul talks about the apostasy. Praise the Lord. In the last days, Apostle Paul talks about apostasy. That means the falling away of the church. So if you read Second Thessalonians, second chapter, it's very clearly written. The church is going to fall down. Okay. So, I mean, the church is going to get uh, in, inside heresies, false teachings, you know, so many kinds of uh, uh, false messiahs coming inside the church. So, there will be a falling away of the church, but then God will come and destroy the destroyer. And again, he will create a new Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. The bride of Christ is getting uh, created newly. Praise the Lord. So, we heard uh, this, you know. Uh, so many things uh, we we heard about the mountains and all that is just a recapping, uh, you know, of all that we heard. I think last week we heard. Okay, so today we talk we'll talk about uh, new wine and new wine skin. Okay, so let us get into the word of God. Can anybody in your Bible to Luke chapter five, verse thirty-seven and thirty-nine? Luke chapter five. Oh, praise God. Uh, Thomas has come. Madhavi has come. Thank you for coming, Madhavi. Praise the Lord. God bless you Praise all. Lord, Anna. Uh, how are you, Ma? Okay, how, how, are you? how are you? I'm fine, Anna. I'm very fine. Yeah. That's that's nice. You know, we, we all as a team are praying for you. We are praying for you. Thank you, Anna. Thank you. And for your son, we are praying for, you know, Aman, we are praying for him. Okay. Yeah. So everything you, is good. Uh, Going as per plan, uh, all the things, you know, they're going as per plan in yes, education and all that. Yes, yes, Anna. That's Everything it. as per plan, it is going on very smoothly by the grace of God. Wow, that's beautiful. May wow. God bless him and may God help him with a good seat. Okay. Amen. Amen. May he find the admission. Amen. This is our prayer. Okay. Amen. I think my mother is muted. Yeah. Okay, guys. Shall we? Okay. Shall we get into uh, the word of God? I don't have the Bible today. Ma uh, Luke chapter 5, verse 37 and 39. Help me read it. Yeah. Can somebody read it, please? Yeah. And no one pours new wine into old wine skins. Otherwise, the new wine will burst the skins. The wine will run out and the wine skins will be ruined. No new wine must be poured into new wine skins. And no one after drinking old wine wants the new, for they say the old is better. Okay. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay. Uh just one minute. Huh? Let me also read it. Wonderful. Luke chapter 5, verse 37 to 39. Okay. So, and no one puts new wine into old wineskins or else the new wine will burst the wineskins and be spilled and the wineskins will be ruined. But new wine must be poured into new wineskins and both are preserved. Hallelujah. So, this is a beautiful thing. And no one having drunk old wine immediately desires new, for he says, the old is better. Praise the Lord. So, here, uh, today we will discuss about how uh, the new wine is very, very figurative. You know, even in the book of Revelations, we will come to that slowly. Okay, how the 
what it stands for and what is it made of okay so uh fine first uh, to understand this verse first understand what is wine what is wine can anybody say what is wine you all know what is wine it is made from grapes praise the lord hallelujah then what is wine skin okay because there are two things mentioned over here wine and wine skins okay so wine skin is a vessel it is it's a vessel to contain the wine okay so we are clear on this wine means it's made from grapes wine skin means it's a vessel to contain the wines praise the lord right so what does it mean you know in a figurative sense what does it mean you know because uh, jesus is talking everything about you know it's he is talking in a very figurative sense what does he mean about wine and wine skins hallelujah first of all let us understand what does jesus mean by saying wine to the people praise the lord hallelujah so wine there are certain things in the bible okay which are actually you know natural products which are referred to you know which actually bring which relate to the soul we will read it can you turn to aisha chapter 55 and verse 1 to 3 can you read aisha chapter 55 verse number 1 to 3 Yeah, read it, please. Yes, can you read it? Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk, without money and without cost. Okay. why spend money on what is not bread and your labor on what does not satisfy listen listen to me and eat what is good and you will delight in the richest of fare give ear and come to me listen that you may live i will make an everlasting covenant with you my faithful love promise to david okay now in context we see something where uh god is talking to the prophet aisha you know uh the deutero aisha or the you know the uh, what he called uh, the original aisha whatever okay they say aisha is been written by two aishas one is the there is a original aisha and then there is a deutero that is you know there's a second aisha also okay now now look at this what god is saying you know everyone who is thirsty come to the waters and you have no money come buy and eat yes come buy wine and milk you know here there are certain uh, natural products which are mentioned over here one is water one is milk and one is wine okay and if you read very very carefully if you read the first word the second verse and then when you reach the third verse we understand that what god is meaning to the people is that these these terms which he is saying that water wine and milk they are referring to the words hallelujah that's why he says to the third, in the third verse incline your ear that means what does the ear do it hears the words which are told by somebody around incline your ear and come to me hear and your soul will live so what will the person hear he will hear the words praise the lord hallelujah then he says if you do that i will make an everlasting covenant that means that means that there is some teaching that god is saying god is speaking and that teaching he is comparing it to three things that is wine milk and water praise the lord hallelujah you see exactly this is how you know that's what the word of god continuously says uh, uh, that you know word is referred to as the living waters because when when somebody hears for example you know you know that uh, lady the samaritan lady who stood there and when she heard the words of jesus it actually became life in her so much life that she was so excited she ran and she told the whole village and she brought the whole village to jesus christ saying this is the man who has read my heart 
praise the lord she became totally excited see this is what words can do to us it can transform us that's why jesus said living waters praise the lord hallelujah so even the spirit when it speaks the words of god hallelujah the holy spirit words of god those words go deep inside our soul and then they do the work praise the lord hallelujah and we it becomes like a fountain those words become like a fountain suddenly we get excited when we hear something new we get extremely excited and all our sorrow all wherever we are sad depressed or whatever you know just we dump it aside and we then get energized hallelujah and then we see in hebrews chapter 5 there is a lot there is no time you know you all know that you are all matured but you know where paul is referring to as you know as new born children desiring the milk of the word of god hallelujah praise the lord as new born children desiring the milk of the word of god that means he in hebrew chapter 5 he compares the word of god to milk and meat praise the lord and he says that the new born babies should feed on the milk of the word of god but the adult people that is the spiritually grown and the mature congregation that is you and me should desire the strong meat of the word of god hallelujah praise the lord how beautiful it is the scripture see that praise god so you know that the word means it's compared to water wine milk and these are the three things water wine milk you know uh th- uh, that's why i said they are used see so many things in the bible are used figurative when it comes to jesus parables everything is so figurative praise the lord hallelujah everything is so figurative so we must understand what are the parables that jesus spoke and what are the figurative uh things that things or products or metaphors that he used and what are they referring to and it becomes easy when you are decoding the book of revelations because more or less you know it will uh, stick to the same principles of interpretation praise the lord hallelujah so now you know so you know now uh, let me recap okay let me ask you unless you are already asleep okay what 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 is it meaning wine what does it meaning wine come on tell me what are the two things mentioned there in the book of uh, just now we when we read the book of luke uh, chapter 5 37 to 39 there are two things mentioned number is one is wine and another is wine skin okay now uh, what is wine referring to come on tell me speak it it's referring to the words hallelujah we see that so in fact when you hear the word of god it's like you are being you know uh, what you call it it makes your heart pleasant just like the wine makes you pleasant praise the lord hallelujah so it's used in a figurative sense praise the lord now the second thing which we heard in luke chapter 5 verse 37 to 39 is about wine skin now you know wine wins means the word now what is the wine skin come on i want you to answer me what is the wine skin is it us pastor Uh, like a body is a temple of god it, mm. exactly praise the lord so wine skin refers to people who receive the word because wine will uh, get into wine skins praise the lord so uh, wine will get into wine skins so the words will get into the heart of a man praise the lord hallelujah so wine skin means in a figurative sense it is the heart of a person praise the lord hallelujah now i want you to understand that our heart is like a vessel praise the lord it's like a vessel it's like a wine skin which holds the wine now because i always told you everything that we say linked to god's word and uh we link everything to god's word and the rule of bible study is scripture interprets scripture this is what i've been always telling you, you must never keep any interpretation to uh, a private individual no scripture interprets scripture so si- scripture supports scripture itself so you don't need anybody's validation any person's validation 
the scripture will validate itself by another scripture okay so i told you that the vessel means the wine skin means the vessel which holds the wine okay now uh, let's go to a supporting scripture which talks about it acts chapter 9 and verse number 15 come on go on acts chapter 9 and verse number 15 but the lord said to ananias go this man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the gentiles and their kings and to the people of israel hallelujah ha huh. go on. go ahead i will show him how much he must suffer for my name then ananias went to the house and okay, entered okay. Uh, did you read uh... Acts. Uh, yeah. Which version did you read? Uh, can you read it again? Nine fifteen. Ah, uh, Sister Banu. Nine fifteen. But the Lord said to Ananias, "Go. Yeah. This man yeah. is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel." Okay. Now I'll read it to to you from the book of uh, uh, from the version NKJV, which uh, NKJV and NIV is the standard versions. Okay. So uh, closer to KJV is uh, NKJV. Okay. Look like this. But the Lord said to him, "Go, go, for Paul, that is Apostle Paul, is a chosen vessel of mine." Praise the Lord. He is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name. before the gentiles and the children of israel praise the lord so here we see very clearly that paul god talks as a chosen vessel praise the lord that means wine skin praise the lord hallelujah that's why i said scripture will support scripture we don't need anybody's validation about what's the truth so scripture will stand by itself so you know vessel means a person who hears the word and who stores the word okay come on very good amen now coming to the point what do you mean now first we clarified about wine and then we clarified about wine skin now we we will clarify about old wine and new wine okay so old wine should be put in old wine skins new wine should be put in new wine skins <laughs> okay now if you reverse this order if you put new wine in old wine skins the old wine skins will burst because the new wine will ferment it and it will burst it will it will become uh, you know it will expand and when it expands it will burst the old wine skin that's it so the new the old wine skin cannot hold the new wine so what does this mean okay now we coming we come to this point where we discussed about what is wine second we discussed about what is vessel that is wine skin now we will discuss about what is old wine and what is new wine okay praise the lord so now you tell me what is first old wine can you tell me old wine what is old wine come on try try first is it our old nature our sinful nature mm hmm Uh, okay Re remember uh, good attempt good attempt excellent but remember we talked about wine compared to the words right then wine skin to the person right then what is old wine old testament prophets or people who lived in that area in that exactly, period exactly exactly justin is correct praise the lord hallelujah so it talks about the old covenant praise the lord which the which the 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 pharisees and the sadducees they received they were the vessels who were holding the old covenant praise the lord hallelujah they were holding the old covenant and they were the wine skins okay and the old wine was the words of the old testament okay which were given to them before the coming of jesus the old covenant or the old testament or the old covenant that is the 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 first covenant 
because after Jesus came, he introduced a second covenant. So you talked about the first covenant. It's the old wine, which the old, uh, what he called, uh, the wineskins are the Pharisees and the Sadducees who were holding the, the Old Testament law. Hallelujah. Now we will read some supporting scriptures about that. Can somebody read Galatians chapter 1, verse number 7, uh, sorry, John chapter 1 and verse number 17. Yeah, read it please. If anyone choose to do God's will. No, no, no. He John will chapter find 1, him. verse number 17. 1, 7. Oh, no. 7, 17. No, no. John chapter 1. 1. 1 okay. or O-N-E. 1. <laughs> For the law was given through Moses, yeah. but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. You see, we talk about two contradictory things over here. One is the law and one is grace and truth. Both are like plus and minus. Okay, Both are like two ends of a rope. Okay, Both are uh, referring to an old and a new. Praise the Lord. So the law that it came through the through Moses, praise the Lord. But grace and truth is completely the opposite of the law. Completely opposite. So old wine at the first coming of Jesus was the law of Moses. And the old wine skin at the first coming of Jesus were the priest who preached to the law. Praise the Lord. This is what we must understand very clearly. Praise the Lord. Okay. Another supporting scripture. Uh, Luke chapter 16 and verse number 16. Can we hear? Luke chapter 16, verse number 16. Yeah. Yeah. The law and the prophets were proclaimed until John. Yeah. Since that time, the good news of the kingdom of God is being preached. And okay. everyone is forced into it. So the, yeah. So the law, uh, what did we, uh, Luke chapter 16, verse number 16, it says, the law and the prophets were preached until John. Very clearly it's given here over here. The law and the prophets were preached until John. Since that time, the kingdom of God has been preached and everyone is pressing into it. Praise the Lord. So, and you know, Jesus talked about, you know, the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God. Both are, you know, uh, synonymously uh, referring to the same subject. But till John the Baptist, the law was preached. Praise the Lord. And then afterwards, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven is being preached. Praise the Lord. So the law was like an elementary teacher and it ended with John the Baptist. And we are now coming into practicing the truth. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, uh, one more scripture I want you, you all to read. Okay. Galatians chapter 3, verse number 23 and 24, where it talks, it talks about the law being an elementary teacher. Can you go there? Galatians chapter 3, verse 23 and 24. It's a beautiful scripture, I promise you. You will be excited when you hear this scripture. A beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Come on, read it, please. Chapter 3. Verse number 23 and 24. Before this faith came, we were held prisoners by the law, locked yes. up until faith should be revealed. So the law was put in charge to, to lead us to Christ that we might be justified by faith. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But before faith came, we were kept guarded by the law. That means, okay. We were kept for the faith which would afterwards be revealed. Therefore, the law was our teacher, tutor, to bring us to Christ that we might be justified by faith. Praise the Lord. So, it was a, very clearly, it talks about the law which is like a teacher, you know. And it ended with John the Baptist. Hallelujah. But it brought us to Christ. It presented us Christ. That's all. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And Christ, we see, is that fulfillment of all the scripture. And he brought faith and grace and truth. Praise the Lord. Now, 
you understood now what is old wine and old wine skin old wine is the law of moses which was preached the old testament and all it's a part of the first covenant okay of god and the old wine skin are referring to the pharisees and the sadducees who were holding the uh, the law which moses gave and they were preaching and practicing it okay so we, slowly we will enter into the book of revelations based on this knowledge so don't worry this is very vital for you to understand you know as we progressively go you will see how we enter into the book of revelation with this subject of wine and wine skin okay so hold on okay now we finished with what is wine what is wine skin we finished with what is old wine okay now let us go to what is new wine praise the lord hallelujah everyone shout hallelujah this is exciting amen it gets more exciting from here praise the lord so what is new wine now if you want to see what is new wine just read john chapter 15 and verse 1 one you'll understand he said jesus himself said in his words i am the wine and we are the branches hallelujah so the word of jesus is jesus himself is the wine praise the lord and the words of jesus is the new wine praise god because we we saw we are maintaining that consistency where wine means word praise the lord and jesus words are the new wine praise the lord hallelujah or jesus and or whatever uh, the the pastor or whatever the man of god who is preaching the new uh, uh, the teachings of jesus he is the new wine praise the lord hallelujah so we see okay that jesus was the new wine and who was actually uh, fulfilling the old testament who was actually uh, his words and his calling were greater than that of john that means you see the the new wine is greater than the old wine okay so that's why you see we we see that jesus is fulfilling the old testament and the words of jesus are weightier than john the baptist and jesus had a calling which is very very superior to the to john the baptist john the baptist was until moses law but jesus started the kingdom of god the preaching on the kingdom of god and the kingdom of heaven and brought about a new wine and it should be given new wine should be added to new skins praise the lord hallelujah so at the first coming of jesus hallelujah so it the new wine was the word of revelation or fulfillment of the old testament scripture praise the lord at the first coming of jesus because he is the one who the whole, entire old testament was referring to and he fulfilled each and every they say during the lifetime of jesus 3 and a half years he fulfilled nearly to nearly they say 200 prophecies he fulfilled praise the lord which were given about him in the old testament so he was he fulfilled them you know he was the word of revelation that fulfilled the old testament now i want again a supporting scripture for this john chapter 19 and verse number 30 can somebody read it please where it's written jesus fulfilled the new covenant praise the lord quickly somebody na john chapter 19 john chapter 19 and verse number 30 when he had received the drink jesus said it is finished with that he bowed his head and gave up his spirit okay you see that so we see how he fulfilled when he cried out it is finished hallelujah and you know so uh look at this you know read it and then he established the new covenant and the proof of that is given in another verse where we read john chapter 13 and verse number 34 can you read that please john chapter 13 and verse number 34 where jesus is talking about a new commandment that he gives a new covenant that he is establishing a new command i give you love one another as i have loved you so you must love one another by this all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another you see that so jesus brought in a new commandment praise the lord a new covenant we see this 
uh, often being repeated by Jesus. This is a new covenant in my blood. Then he says to his disciples in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 onwards, 1, 23, 27, he says, this is a new covenant in my blood. Then at another place, he says that, you know, just now what we read, he says, behold, behold I give you a new commandment to love one another just as I love you. That means you should love a person until death. Hallelujah. So that, that commandment to love, that commandment to love, you see, that's why the kingdom of God is composed of love and God is love. So, but the Old Testament wasn't revealing the love of God. In fact, it was re revealing, you know, the, the punishment or the anger or the wrath of God more than the love of God. You see that? But, you know, it was hinting out to the New Testament, the fulfillment where uh, the actual nature of God, it came because God loves justice. He loves righteousness. He loves, uh, he, lo he wants us to look about others, care about others, others' properties, others' things. And, you know, he wants to, uh, wants us to have a society which is, you know, completely equal in all respects, you know, and there's no exploitation and so on and so forth. That's what the law was given. But now Jesus is talking about the new covenant and new commandment. Hallelujah. So he's giving, what does he mean? He's giving new words. That means wine, praise the Lord. And who are the wineskins who are holding the word? Excuse me. Who are the wine skills that are holding the word? The 12 disciples, praise the Lord, who later on became the 12 apostles, praise the Lord. And they went and started preaching to the whole world. And we became the recipients of the new wine, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So at the second coming of Jesus, we see how the disciples uh, received the word of God. And it was told to them in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. It was preached until the prophecy was fulfilled. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, you know, old wine at the second coming of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Now, at the second coming of Jesus also, we should know what is the old wine and what is the new wine. What is the old wine skin? Because there is another new wine which is going to come. Okay. So, because there are two things. One is the first coming of Jesus. And then there is a second coming of Jesus. Okay. Now, at the time of the second coming of Jesus, again, there is a wine that is being served. So that means the words which are told by Jesus at the first coming, when he came on this earth, they will become old wine. Again, the apostles' teachings will become old. Uh, uh, the apostles' teachings will become old wine. And then the new wine comes, which is actually talked about in the book of Revelations. And that is where we are heading to. Praise the Lord. You see that, for example... Today, if I were to drink yesterday's wine, it will become old. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So today, if I were to drink today's wine, it will become new. So till now, the teachings that we have, it is the wine that Jesus gave to us during his first coming on this earth. Please understand. Once again, I'm telling till now, the teachings that Jesus gave to us, which we are following, it is the wine that Jesus gave to us at the first coming on this earth. Hallelujah. But then also there is a better wine which makes this wine old. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So now we will go and we will look into this. What is this new wine which we have to seek? Hallelujah. Which will make the present teaching also old in terms of the new wine that will be given. Can somebody turn your Bible? Hallelujah. To the book of. Luke chapter 22, verse number 14 to 20. So Jesus is talking about a new wine there. Luke chapter 22, verse 14 to 20. Yeah. I know it may some people may find it little, little confusing, but it's very simple actually. Go ahead. Read Luke chapter 22, verse 14 to 20. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles Mm. reclined at the table and mm. he said to them I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer for I tell you I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God mm. after taking the cup he gave thanks and said take this and divide it among you for I tell you I will not drink again of the fruit of the wine until the kingdom of God comes. 
Oh my God, God. Bas, enough, enough. Praise the Lord. I will not drink again the fruit of the wine until the kingdom of God comes. Praise the Lord. So that means <laughs> there is a new wine. Praise the Lord. Which again, God is going to serve to us in the kingdom of God. That is supposedly to come, which we have not yet seen, but it's going to come in the future. Praise the Lord. And God is promising that there is a new wine. You, you know now that wine means words. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So there is supposedly a new kingdom that is going to come. We, where we and Jesus will sit and will drink of the new wine. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So very clearly. Now, there's another supporting scripture for this. Can you go and read Matthew chapter 26, verse 26 to 29? Matthew chapter 26, verse 26 to 29. While they were eating, Jesus yeah. took bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to, the, to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body. Then he took up, took the cup, gave thanks and offered it to them saying, drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Okay. I tell you. I will not drink of this fruit of the wine from now on until that day when I drink it anew with you in my father's kingdom. Oh my God. Praise the Lord. So we hear very, very clearly over here saying that there is a new wine which Jesus is again talking about in verse number 29, which I will drink, which he will drink with us in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Okay. So now we are fast forwarding into an exciting time where we actually see the new wine. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we actually see the unfolding of this truth, which is there in the book of Revelations. So instead of going, uh, you know, uh, uh, like having a teaching, which is like, you know, referring backwards, I'm going from backwards to forward. Okay. So now, you know, from the New Testament, old wine, now we are entering into the book of revelations where we are talking about the new wine hallelujah which is being which we are all going to drink in the kingdom of god along with jesus praise the lord hallelujah how many of you all are excited come on amen everyone say i'm excited, <laughs> come on, I'm excited. Your... Amen. because this is absolutely going to blow your mind it's absolutely going to you know enthrall you like anything praise the lord now go to the book of revelations chapter 14 and verse number one you will see how, you know, there the, it is referring to the new wine. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Then I looked and there before me was the lamb standing on Mount Gion and with him 1,44,000 who had his name and his father's name written on their foreheads. Mm -hmm. And I heard a sound from the heaven like a like the roar of rushing waters and like a loud peal of thunder. The sound I heard was like that of harpists playing their harps and they sang a new song before the throne and before four living creatures and the elders. No one could learn the song except the 1,44,000 who had been redeemed from the earth. Oh my God, praise God. Hallelujah, enough, enough. So here we see that they were singing a new song, a new wine, praise the Lord, new words. You know, that means they were not, so, you know, you, you look now, you carefully observe, you know, it's a matter of, you know, a little bit, uh, you know, uh, application of common sense, okay. For example, Miriam sang a song of deliverance when, the people came out of uh, the Red Sea. Miriam sang a song of deliverance during the Old Testament. Praise the Lord. And today we have hymns in the New Testament that sing the song, that refer to the song of deliverance, which God gave us through the cross. Praise the Lord. But what could this song be? Praise the Lord. It's a new song. 
Praise God. Hallelujah. The redeemed, the 144,000 people, the redeemed people standing on Mount Zion. Praise the Lord. You all know that Mount Zion is a constant subject which is preached in the, in the Bible. Praise the Lord. Mount Zion is a place where Abraham went and sacrificed his son Isaac. Mount Zion is a place where uh, Solomon built uh, the temple, Second Chronicles chapter 3, verse number 1. Then we see Mount Zion is also the place where uh, Jesus was crucified, praise God, Calvary, Golgotha, everything, hallelujah, where it's, it was on Mount Zion, where Jesus became the sacrificial lamp, which actually uh, fits because he was a temple, which actually fits the temple of Solomon, which actually fits uh, Isaac, which was as a lamp. And then we see, praise the Lord, a spiritual Mount Zion till there, until the sacrifice of Jesus, everything was, hallelujah, literal. But now we see a new Mount Zion. That means a new place of worship, hallelujah. A new place of encounter with Jesus, a temple, praise the Lord, hallelujah. A new a new body of Christ, a new church, praise the Lord. A new place where people are gathered, Mount Zion, hallelujah. Revelation chapter 14, verse 1, Mount Zion. And then these people are singing a song that means hallelujah they are singing a new song a new song because there was a new deliverance for this redeemed people praise the lord so that means that something is going to happen in history where some people are going to be delivered just like you know the children of israel were delivered from egypt just like a christian is delivered from sin in the future there is going to be an attack on the church and then the church will overcome that and they will be the redeemed people. They will be that 1,44,000 people who will stand on the spiritual Mount Zion and worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. I don't know how many how of you all are able to relate, you know, or are you lost? You know, I want to hear from you, you know. Are you able to relate or are you able to, are you, are you lost? Any doubts you have on this? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay. You know, so my dear friends, there's a new song that is people are going to sing. Amen. At the second coming of Jesus. First coming of Jesus, people sang a new song of deliverance of the cross. Second coming of Jesus, they will sing. You know, the first coming of Jesus was about the fulfillment of the Old Testament law. The second coming of Jesus will be about the fulfillment of the New Testament, which is the book of Revelation. Okay, praise the Lord. So at the second coming of Jesus, new wine will be the, the things, the words that will talk about the fulfillment of New, new Testament. A new wine skin will be the pastors or the priest of the 12 tribes. That is 12 into 12,000, 1,44,000. So this is what is the new wine that we should look forward, my dear friends. Hallelujah. The new wine that we should look forward, praise the Lord, hallelujah, to drink along with Jesus. Because now the past is past. Remember that the people missed the first coming of Jesus because they couldn't understand the word of God. Now don't miss the second coming of Jesus because the second coming of Jesus because is being preached to you right now. I am preaching the second coming of Jesus. So do not miss it because you should drink of that new wine and you should, you know, have that New wine in new wine skin. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So at the second coming of Jesus, there will be this, you know, church on Mount Zion, which will be the 12,000 people. Hallelujah. In every tribe, in 12 tribes, which will be 1,44,000. Now, you, some of you may say that, brother, 1,44,000, you mean only 1,44,000 will be redeemed? You know, you may have that doubt. Okay. In the New in the new uh, church on on Mount Zion, which is going to come in the future, you may have a doubt, brother. Is it only one lakh forty four thousand people? Pastor Sumit, is is it only one lakh forty four thousand people? But I want to tell you that if you read carefully the Book of Revelation, along with one lakh forty four thousand, there is a multitude. Praise the Lord, which are singing from different languages of different tribes of different tongues which are presenting themselves into the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. 
So obviously, this 1,44,000 people refer to spiritual leaders behind them are the multitudes. Hallelujah. Amen. So you may be a part of the multitude or you may be that 1,44,000 was actually redeemed, who is actually leading the multitudes. So my dear friends, so don't be alarmed. It's not just 1,44,000. On the face of it, these are the spiritual leaders. Okay of Israel, but behind them are the multitudes, their congregations. Okay. So you can also be a one person out of that 1,44,000 or you can be a member behind a leader like me. Uh, you know, you can be a, a, a member of the new church, hallelujah, of the church at the, the spiritual church that at Mount Sayam, hallelujah. So my dear friends, hallelujah. Now, amen. We heard about, praise the Lord, hallelujah. The wines, praise the Lord. You all know that, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Now, look at this, look at this, amen. So, we clearly heard about what is wine and what is old skin, what is new wine, what is old wine, what is new wine, what is new wine skin. No, so there is going to be a special crowd which is going to rise up in the last two days, hallelujah who will have the teaching, you know, where they will identify Jesus at the second coming and they will overcome uh, the enemy and they will be the redeemed. Okay. Now, my dear friends, there is also a wine of adultery. Okay. So, I want uh, we all to read that and then we will quickly close. Okay. So, because everything, I, I'm coming from backward to forward uh, instead of starting from revelations and uh, so getting the, my supporting scriptures from Old Testament. I started from Old Testament and now I've entered into the book of Revelations. So, Revelations chapter 17, verse 1 to 5, it talks about the false wine. Okay. That is another kind of wine. Come on. Read it. Revelations chapter 17, verse 1 to 5. Come on. One of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and said to me, Come. I will show you the punishment of the great prostitute who sits on many waters. With her, the kings of the earth committed adultery and the inhabitants of the earth were intoxicated with the wine of her adulteries. Okay, you see that? Again, this figurative language of the wine is mentioned over here. Again, once again. It's mentioned that people were drunk with the wine of her fornication. That means adultery. Now, you heard until now what I was talking. Amen. And what is wine referring to? Now, you do the interpretation with all the teaching that I gave until now about wine. What could be this? People were intoxicated by the wine of her adultery. Amen. Come on. Anybody? Make guesses. What could this refer to? They did not understand the word of God. Exactly. Praise the Lord. You know, I told that wine means words. Okay. Then wine of adultery means it is not the truth, but it's a mixture of truth and lies. Because, you know, in adultery, what it means that there is not honesty, you know, in the marriage where, you know, a prostitute means she has many uh, what you call, uh, she's not committed to one, but she's committed to many people. And in the same way, uh, the wine of her adultery means, hallelujah, that she has some kind of teaching, some kind of teaching with which she has made everybody drunk. And that is exactly what is going to happen in the church today. That is exactly different kinds of teachings which are far away from the truth of the word. That's why beware. Everything that looks good to you, that sounds pleasant to the ears, I don't think that is God's word. Hallelujah. You know, everything that is very promising, everything, you know, today, you know, people can, people are so tempted for popularity that they can fake themselves walking on, walking on water, walking in the air, you know, or, you know, because they want people, you know, and the praises of people. Hallelujah. You know, things are happening like this. You know, different, different kinds of teachings which are very far from leading the people in the truth. 
Alleluia. Remember the true wine uh, is the wine, the words that will bring salvation to the soul. Remember, you know, we constantly read the theme where the words, you know, are like milk and water and wine and meat. These are the terms, these are the figurative and natural words that are used in the in the natural world. These things have a make sense, right? You know, wine makes sense, milk makes sense, water makes sense, meat makes sense. All these things are pointing to the words. Hallelujah. See, a word of God should be accompanied with the truth. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, my dear friends, this is why be very careful of things which are pleasant to the ears. No, my dear friends. In fact, you know, sometimes you should hear the bitter truth. Hallelujah. You should take the bitter herb. Hallelujah. Sometimes you should learn about the truth as the truth is. Praise God. So many kings of the earth in the last days committed, committed fornication. They were drunk with the wine of her adulteries. This is, this is a scarlet woman uh, pictured over here. And with a scarlet beast. That means scarlet means red. This is a red woman with a red beast. Okay, now, you know, my dear friends, it talks about the fallen church with all the false teachings, the false words that are leading the people, you know, into a life where they're not completely able to tell the truth. Hallelujah. You know, my friends, now I want you to read very carefully, you know, another two verses and then we will close. Revelation chapter 18 and verse 2 and 3. Revelation chapter 18, verse 2 and 3. Yeah, can you read it? With a mighty voice, he shouted, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the Great. She has become a home for demons and a haunt for every evil spirit, a haunt yeah. for every unclean and detestable bird. For all the nations have drunk the maddened wine of her adulteries. The king of the earth committed adultery with her and the merchants of the earth grew rich from her excessive luxuries. Amen. Praise the Lord. Then fourth verse. Then I heard another voice from heaven say, Come out of her, my hmm. people, so that you will not share in her sins, so Amen. that you will not receive any of her plagues. Yeah. For her sins are piled up to heaven and God yeah. has Remembered her crimes. Enough. Praise God. You see, when it talks about another nation, you know, first we talk about, we talked about the 144,000 who are the redeemed people of the, uh, what you called uh, church, new church at Mount Sion, who are standing and who are praising with a new song. Praise the Lord. We, we are talking about a nation. Hallelujah. At the, at the second coming of Jesus, not the first, at the second coming of Jesus, there is a nation which is standing on spiritual Mount Zion, which are praising God, and out of them, heading them are the one lakh forty-four thousand people, and behind them are you know the thousands of people who are who are praising God. And then we see here in Revelation chapter eighteen, praise the Lord, Hallelujah, where there is a nation, but it's not like the nation which is the holy nation; it's the opposite of that holy nation. This is a nation which is composed of people who are drunk. With a false, with a wine, which is the wine of Satan, which is the words of Satan, praise the Lord. Do everything, you know, you can be everything. You can live like everything, you know, it's okay to do things. It's all right, you know, and already this, that pressure is coming on to the churches, you know, to accept everybody, to accept uh, homosexuals, to accept lesbians, to accept, you know, uh, everybody. So you, everybody can come to the church, okay. So the, like you know, there's there there is this kind of thing already happening, and now it's ha going to happen more and more, more and more. Where the where you know, my dear friends, where the truth is going to be subdued. That means it's it's not going to be like you know, blown in the trumpet. Praise the Lord. You know, like everybody clear to hear the when the trumpet sounds, people can hear very clearly that the trumpet has sounded. But today. People are not blowing the trumpets. Instead, people are blowing a small flute which nobody can hear. Hallelujah. Because they have compromised with the world. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, my friends, false prophecies, 
commentaries. Hallelujah. Horrible things happening, my dear friends. Hallelujah. You know, then we see how people are deceived by the sorcery of the nations. The nations are deceived by the sorcery of this scarlet woman. That means there is a nation that has fallen away. And, you know, this is not even talking about the Gentile world. This is talking about what is happening in the Christian world. So imagine, uh, we are not even discussing about the Gentile world. We are talking about in the church where a group of 1,44,000 people and some thousands are selected to stand before Mount Zion. And there is another group of Christians who are actually drunk with the fornication. That means the fall, fall the wine of fornication. That means the false teachings. Hallelujah. You know, my friends. Okay. So, uh, you know, I think uh, I have done and then praise the Lord. So very important for us to is to understand this. We are the redeemed the church and we should look forward for standing on Mount Zion and being a part of that 1,44,000. And if you don't want to be a leader of the 1,44,000, at least be a part of the multitudes who are standing before the Lamb. Hallelujah. Which is talked about, you know, there's a multitude, you know, which is standing before the Lamb with and praising God. Hallelujah. At least be a part of that multitude, but don't be a part of this uh, nation which is drunk with the wine of fornication, the words of fornication. Praise God. Love the truth. Amen. Praise the Lord. Practice the truth. Live by the truth. Hallelujah. So I think I, I discussed a lot. I, you know, amen. I hope you're all blessed. We are going to close now. Okay. Yeah. A any doubts you have? Any doubts you have about about how things are? Okay. Uh, okay. L let me, uh, you know, I told you about in Revelation chapter 14 verse 1 and 2, 3, 1, like 44,000. But I also want to point out about uh, a bigger nation than the 1, like 44,000. You know, Justin, can you read this? Revelation chapter 5 and verse number 8 onwards to 10. Two verses. Can you read that? Revelation chapter 5, verse 8 to 10. And when he had taken it, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down hmm. before the Lamb. Each one had a heart, and they were holding golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. Okay. And they sang a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals because you are you were slain. And with your blood, you purchased men from men for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God and they will Rain on the earth. Amen. No, you know, see, we saw the same thing happen in Revelation 14, chapter 1, where they were singing a new song. Here we see in Revelation chapter 5, verse number uh, 8 to 10, they are singing a new song. There we see 144,000 people are seeing, they are the redeemed uh, people uh, at the second coming of Jesus. Here also we see there is a redeemed crowd out of every tribe, nation, and are standing before the throne. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, my friends, you know, so I, I prove to you eh, because scripture interprets scripture. Praise the Lord. So, you see that, you know, it is a challenge to all of us to be a part of this redeemed thing and drink of that new wine. So, desire for that new wine. Now, I, I tell you, my dear friends, desire for that new wine at the second coming of Jesus. At the second coming of Jesus, there is going to be a wine served. Hallelujah. You know, so desire for that new wine. And Jesus himself will be a part of the kingdom. And he will have along with us new wine, new teachings, new song. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We will sing. You know, and we will be redeemed for the third time. You know, first time we were redeemed from Egypt. Second time we will redeemed from sin. Now the at the, at the first coming of Jesus. Now the third time our redemption will be from the hands of the Antichrist. Hallelujah. And the kingdom of Babylon. Praise the Lord. And that's why we will sing a new song. So my dear friends, remember you still have to go through the death and born again experience. It's not yet over. 
at the second coming of Jesus, you still have things to overcome. Just like you overcame sin at the first coming of Jesus, at the second coming of Jesus, you still have to overcome. Hallelujah. So get ready, get charged. Now that you know the truth, get charged and prepare yourself. Be strong so that when the second coming of Jesus comes, you won't miss that time. You will be one of that overcomer. Hallelujah. You will identify and you will overcome and you will be in that crowd and you will drink of that new wine, that new song, along with Jesus on Mount Zion. Beautiful. Amen. It's going to be so beautiful. Amen. God bless you. Okay. You have any doubts? Quickly, the window is open. Have any doubts? Can I hear from you? Yes, nobody has a doubt. You are, either you are totally confused or you totally understood. So what is it? The first one or the second one? Anybody has a doubt? Okay. Shall we uh, then, you know, close or... Okay. Uh, in other words, how, how, are, are, are you... Did you know anything new? What new did you learn today? Anybody? What new did you learn today? Can you tell me your experience of hearing the wine, the words today? Amen. Everything Quickly. what I, uh, what all doubts I have about this wine, you cleared everything now, Anna. Because I, every time I used to think, what is this old wine? What is this new wine? Wine skin difference. Mm -hmm. You completely uh, cleared the subject, you posted it in such a way, you lectured it like for the students, how everything you teach, each and every word you have taken, showed it from the scripture and you explained what it is very clearly. Very good. Praise Amen. God for what, for what you have teach today to us. Amen. So will you look forward to drink the new wine? Yes or no? Yes. Hallelujah. So will you be that new wine skin? Or will you stick to that old? No, my dear friends. There is going to be a new song. There is going to be a new wine. There is going to be a new set of people who will, you know, be ready, prepared for the second coming of Jesus. And I believe that you are that crowd. Okay. God bless you. Have a nice time. Thanks for joining everyone. Until the next time, you know, see you all. Thank you so much. Yeah.